Traditional sweet recipes from Malta Volume 2 soon available at www.traditionalmaltysweets.com Traditional sweet recipes, creating a small size of Malta that feels like home. Ta' sima tana l-lum ser toħodna fiċċentru Malti ta' Parvil, fejn ta' kul xar la' da' storika Maltija torgalizza taħt diet ta' sew interessanti. Il-President ta' la' da' storika Maltija, Joseph Borch, din l-intervista ma' Mark Avellino. We've been going for 30 years now. Um, it started, um, I was listening to the radio one morning and uh, there was an advertisement which said that uh, Dr. Kauki and Dr. Joseph Gregg we're going to hold a series of lectures here uh, about Maltese history. Uh, it didn't take much long for me, of course, to make up my mind to come over. Um, anyway, we sit through uh, the first lecture and uh, present, uh, there was also Dr. Henry Frendo. And afterwards, he and I got to talking, you know, and uh, we approached Morris and said to him, uh, this is fantastic, you know, we should organize a, a group of people to have these on a constant basis rather than just six lectures. Um, and that's it. Anyway, so uh, we turned up for the other uh, lectures and uh, Morris said to me, uh, well, why don't you form a group of interested people and let me know about it, which we did. Luckily for us, we had a visitor from Malta. His name was uh, Joseph Samut, who was a member of the Order of Malta as well. And uh, while here, um, uh, it was decided that he will hold a lecture here. And the first lecture was called um, the history of the Maltese people between 1798 and 1807, I think, in caricature, because he had actually published a book of Maltese caricatures, and it was a fantastic meeting. After the meeting, uh, Morris and uh, Henry uh, addressed the crowd, and there were about 50, 60 people here, and put to them, would you be interested if we formed an association and basically a show of hands unanimous and, and it was on. So we decided then to uh, get a group of people as an interim committee, which consisted of Henry, of course, uh, uh, Joe Gregg, myself, Mary Gallia, who's a professor now, and we twisted uh, Joseph Samut's arms to give us another lecture in January the following year. Um, and he was very generous and he kindly came along. So we had our second lecture, which was on the history of numismatics in Malta, the study of coins, because Joseph Samut was a great coin collector of the Order of Malta. Anyway, so when the lecture was over, we got up and said, OK, um, again, we've got this proposal of a, for, for a constitution. We've got an interim committee. And basically, again, everybody agreed to it. And uh, off we went. So we established a historical association. I think it was January the 13th of 1986. And we've wow. been going since. Um, what, are, what are sort of some of the sort of broad topics that have been covered? At this? Oh, goodness Because I know me. they can be quite... quite um... Oh, anything. I mean, uh, from, uh, say, the Romans and Malta, the Neolithic temples, uh, the Jews of Malta, the plagues of Malta, the Great Siege of Malta, uh, Operation Pedestal, um, uh, you name it, lace making, uh, stamp collecting, uh, coins of the Order of Malta, uh, migration uh, to, to Australia, the history of the Maltese people in Egypt. Uh, so it really varies, it depends on the speaker. I mean, uh, we've also had a lot of book launches here. Um, uh, which uh, I'm very proud uh, of. Um, we've had some very, very interesting lecturers here. Uh, for, for example, uh, Wettinger uh, was a speaker once, uh, Father Shields, of course, Brugulio, Lino Brugulio, Professor Tony Sagona, his wife, Claudia Sagona, uh, and a host of other people. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and it's been pretty good, really, and I think that's what we need is the variation of a variety, rather, to, to keep people interested. For, for any association like yours to um, remain relevant, how do you find um, getting people attracted to it in this day and age? Like it's, it's difficult in terms of, um, uh, we announce on the radios about our lectures, of course. Um, like any other association, unfortunately, Maltese youth is, um, well, they're not really that interested, are they? Uh, some of them are, of course, but not the majority. Um, but we started a Facebook page uh, where we advertise our 
talks, of course, uh, plus also uh, the person who runs that uh, puts up various you know, photos of Malta and different yeah. extracts from whatever happens in Malta or uh, a subject dealing with Maltese history, whatever. Um, so yes, it, uh, we, f we find it difficult, but that said, we still get you know, our number of people here every month, which is great. We would like to see more, yeah. and like every other Maltese association, my wish is that I will not have to be president again, time after time after time. I want to see fresh blood. Um, whether we get them or not, of course, remains to be seen. Mm. One of the things that would be nice to know a little bit more about is uh, the students from Maltese classes that used to be brought to the MHA for a cultural morning. Could you tell us a little bit more about yes, that? Yes, uh, that was started by uh, Frances Bonici uh, and a group of people uh, that she had with her who were teachers and uh, a lot of them were teaching uh, Maltese of course. Uh, the idea was to bring them here uh, for basically a whole afternoon to immerse them because that's what the program was called, immersion program immerse them in things Maltese um, and that means of course the language uh, the history, uh, food, um, they were given things to make or do, for example, Christmas cribs even, as far as I can remember, um, which basically brought part of the Maltese culture that we knew as kids to these uh, youngsters here in uh, Melbourne. And uh, that was very, very successful and went on for quite a while, yes. Um, how did you uh, view the response from the kids when they sort of started the morning to well, when they finished? In Maltese you say, Echitati. They were quite excited about it because, yeah. uh, again, it's like my kids. Um, I've got a grandson who I was looking for, well, you know, a day, a week. And I taught him how to play bocce, you know, marbles, that yeah. I used to play as a kid. And he thought it was the cat's pajamas. And, and I think that's what you need to do with these kids. Uh, introduce them to the simple things um, that we used to do as kids. And uh, by, well, like all the kids, I don't know about your children, but my children love figoli, they love ravioli, they love atarasel, yeah. you know. It's part and parcel of the culture. And I think when we were bringing these children here, it was basically the same thing. You're living in a Maltese atmosphere. Uh, and that encompasses a lot of uh, different things, of course. Mm. We have had in the past um, uh, the invitation to go to the Saturday morning school of languages uh, to present a 20 minute talk on Maltese history. I've done that two or three times myself. Um, I think that's fantastic. Mm. And, and, uh, and I am happy to say that uh, if we were requested to provide people like that with a, with a, a lecture or a talk, uh, I'm very happy to go wherever mm. uh, to discuss um, uh, with the teacher and uh, the students uh, any topic of Maltese history. And in fact, uh, the few times I went, I delivered the lecture in Maltese, oh, wow. uh, which was a bit difficult for me too, mm. because I've been here 63 years like you, you know. But th that said, uh, because it was a Maltese language class, I had to show example again by speaking Maltese to mm. the kids. When you've been around for so long, there must be some things that you're particularly proud of. Would you like to sort of just mention a few of the, what you think the legacy or the biggest achievements have well, been for, for, uh, for you? I, I think we have done a heck of a lot to try and keep the concept of Malteseness uh, alive. Um, we have been active with the MCCV, for example, uh, in the Maltese Cultural Festival. I think the fact that we've been going for 30 years suggests that um, the interest shown by the people that come to our meetings is suggesting to me that we've been doing something worthwhile. Mm. So that to me is our heritage, if you like. The other thing, of course, our lectures are free. So I would love to have more people who are able out there. And if people are watching this and you can provide us with a talk, please let us know. Uh, because you'll be more than welcome. Well, in Tervis Sama, Joseph Borch, Jibna Fitmin program, your Horta Maltese Down Under. Minaw nishti ihni ringrazia li li sponsors kolla taana li grazia la poch ta hom etu waslu l-kom dan il-hames stajun. Fil-waqt li nishti il-kom is-sahan fakkarkom li tistaw tamlu kunta t-maana permet tal e-mail maltesetv at gmail.com jew in kella permet tal pajla taana fuq Facebook. Jina marli na tikom appuntamenti horral pallum jima l-stessi.
Multis down under thanks the Malta Tourism Authority, Mayfield's Business Advisors, MPD Steak Kitchen, Maltis Pasitsi Bar and Restaurant, First National Balkan Associates, Maltis Original Pasitsi Company, Smartline and our bronze sponsors.